Brothers and sisters, may the Lord give you his peace. A little over four years ago, the online version of the British news magazine, The Economist, featured a short but fascinating article. And it began this way, quote, run your finger along a windowsill. Amongst the fine particles you collect might well be a tiny amount of cosmic dust, bits of detritus left over from the time of the solar system's formation, unquote. It seems, according to the article, that this cosmic dust has been descending on the Earth ever since the first, the solar system was first formed and had already been identified at the North and South Poles. However, the article continues, research in one of the journals of geology describes the first find of the stuff in urban locales, in the gutters of Paris, Oslo, and Berlin. Researchers sifted through about 300 kilos of gunk, the technical term gunk, <laughs> identifying in that gunk 500 particles not of this world. Their speeds and paths through the atmosphere made them larger and less feather-like than their polar relatives. First, these researchers were in Europe's gutters, now they're looking at the stars. This feast of the epiphany invites us to look at ourselves and then look at the stars. The liturgical celebration of Christmas, which lasts this year from December 25th to January 10th, the feast of the Lord's baptism, immerses us in the sheer grace of the incarnation and has raised us from the gutters to the stars. This is the facet of the mystery of Christmas that we celebrate in today's Feast of the Epiphany. The prophet Isaiah, speaking to a tired and tried people who have just returned from exile, acknowledge, acknowledges the darkness and the thick clouds that have hung over them. But much more powerful and motivating, the prophet says, are the light, radiance, and glory of the Lord who has promised to fill us with good things. St. Paul proclaims much more serenely and plainly the great grace that this feast signifies. Non-Jews, the Gentiles, most of us, are equal heirs of the promises that God has revealed in the good news of Jesus Christ. And so we are co-heirs and we're partners with God in the divine plan of salvation. We've been raised from the gutters of sin and darkness to the kingdom of grace and light. The grace of God has appeared as we proclaimed in the midnight mass of Christmas. Each of us listening today and participating in this Eucharist can list a host of gunk that would keep our eyes focused downward on the gutter. The ongoing pandemic that has adversely affected our families, our businesses, and our ability to move about freely. The riots and looting that have marred the genuine cause of racial justice the widespread adoption of secularism and substitute philosophies and ideologies from all sides that are contrary to the gospel and to our Christian faith, or at least present a lot of challenges. A bitter political campaign and continued polarization of our nation. Migrants who are genuinely searching for peace and a place to call home. Perhaps the gunk is the diagnosis, our own or a family member's, that takes its own toll in caregiving or in energies that we'd rather spend elsewhere. 
and the unreconciled family member who won't forgive us or whom we won't forgive. Yes, we could come to this feast of the epiphany with eyes focused downward on the gutter, despite the Christmas carols we sing and the bright decorations and the gift giving that we've enjoyed in this season. These three mysterious magi risked leaving the comfortable and familiar places of their own souls. And they looked up to a bright star. They looked into the cosmos. The gospel reminds us that after having presented their gifts before the newborn king, they departed for their country by another way. In other words, they were forever changed by their encounter with this mysterious holy family and could not return, return home unchanged. We have to ask ourselves on this feast of the epiphany, do we believe that the word made flesh dwells with us and wants to be with us, especially in our worst places and moments? To proclaim good tidings that lift up our eyes and our whole being toward the stars. If we run our fingers along the window sills of our lives, can we recognize the stardust of divinity now forever mixed with the fragile particles of our humanity in Jesus Christ? No other religion of the world proclaims what the angels, shepherds, and magi, and we proclaim today that the eternal unchangeable God has forever chosen to become one with you, with me, with our world, and with whatever is genuinely human. Humanity is good enough for God, good enough for God to embrace from birth to death to resurrection. Can we imagine the place right now where we least find God and leave the manger today determined to find him? Can we allow the infant Jesus to send us away from the manger and from this altar as a people converted and lifted up to the stars? Can we approach the babe of Bethlehem with what we feel are meager gifts and allow him to take our fragile wounded humanity and lift it up into his divinity and reach for the stars? Brothers and sisters, Merry Christmas, and may the Lord continue to give you his peace.